Today's video is presented in partnership with Hampson Auctions, one of the UK's leading classic, performance and supercar auction houses. Their next sale takes place on the 24th of November at the magnificent Bowlesworth Castle in Cheshire. Hi everybody, welcome back to Rich Reviews and today is the second in our workshop series for the Lotus Amira and today we're going to be covering off how to repair the rear luggage storage net on the Lotus Amira. The rear luggage storage net is provided as part of the comfort pack that's provided with the first edition Lotus Amiras. Now first edition Lotus Amiras are very highly optioned and they automatically come with the comfort pack so they automatically have the rear luggage storage net. The rear luggage storage net as the name implies retains storage on the rear parcel shelf section in the Lotus Amira and this is a section where you can use for soft bags and such likes you know if you're going on a bit of a driving tour or for us if you're carrying camera equipment and you don't want it located in the rear luggage area near where the engine is because of course the engine can get quite warm and it means that the luggage area at the back could be quite warm so anything that could be impacted by heat you don't want to keep in the back there for too long so we're driving at the moment to one of our local coffee bistros which is at the Cotswolds water park called the boathouse and this is quite pertinent because the luggage storage net on our car broke when we were parked in the car park there some time back, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, um, when we were there for a coffee because we were doing some filming and my son was setting up a camera to fit on the rear screen, in effect, the, the rear engine compartment screen or the separation bulkhead screen um, so that we could do some filming with a forward facing camera. And he pushed his knee into the side netting area um, and you know and unfortunately put it under a fair bit of strain but not excessive strain and it snapped the top elastic part but it didn't actually snap it came out of its location so today we're going to talk you through how to repair that end clasp section the end elastic section where it connects to the retaining hook um, so that if you have this happen which I suspect will happen quite a bit because it didn't take much pressure um, to, to pull this elastic out of the clasp um, so this will help you if you have the same issue as we did with this end elastic section pulling out of the clasp and in effect breaking the rear luggage storage net. If you were looking to purchase your first supercar or add a car to your collection, Rich Reviews has already helped multiple owners secure their dream supercar. We have a mix and match of services to help take the pain away to ensure a happy, memorable purchase away from the stress that can be caused by car research and dealing negotiations. Our mix and match of services include telephone support calls, pre-purchase inspection and car collection video. For more information, please contact me via a message in the comments below or at the following email address. Now back to the video. So this is the Amira storage net now removed from the car. This is a normal end point. And you can see this hook usually just clips around the end panel, the side panel in the car, which raises and holds the storage net um, upright in this manner. And this is, as you saw when I removed it, this clips through the hook at the bottom and then is, is positioned and snapped to the back so that then it locates the bottom of the net. So this holds it upwards and so it's held upright so it can actually retain items behind it. This is the area of failure that has occurred on ours and probably a weak point on all of the storage nets. Now, to be able to see what failed, if I remove this sleeve, you can see that the elastic is retained in this hook by these two retaining points here. And these two retaining points hold back a clasp, a metal clasp that is attached to the end of the elastic. Now I can show you that in more detail on the one that I've removed here, because this is the one that actually broke on mine. You can see that the elastic is held in this metal clasp which actually locates the elastic into this hook system and this is the parts of the actual hook system here. And this metal clasp came out or, or rather the elastic came out of this metal clasp on mine because the metal clasp isn't fixed on the elastic uh, as tight as necessarily it could have been and it's only a very short only a very very short amount of or very small amount of elastic that's retained in that clasp but what you're talking about there about two millimeters of elastic retained in there so it's not much for it to grip on so what i did was um you, when when this fails this clasp is left retained in this plastic cup for this hook 
and and you have to then be able to remove that bit of metal clasp first of all to be able to reuse it again and the way you do that is you remove this sleeve now you'll see on this that there's an arrow on this on this sleeve and it what it does is it pushes these plastic retainers in so it retains the clasp more so the clasp in effect can't come out now this is located like so and there's an arrow on there that tells you the, the direction and where it should actually locate to so it should locate to the back of the hook so the arrow should follow the back of the hook so to remove that you just literally twist and pull to remove the plastic sleeve and then you have to lever out these hooks a bit with a thin flat blade screwdriver you just lever out these hooks judiciously and then you have to have two screwdrivers either side you gently lever out these hooks so that you can gain access be very careful because if you pull these too tight you could snap them so you don't want to do that but they are they do have a little bit of compliance there so they are pliable to a certain degree and then you can let the clasp drop out then what i did was I tidied up the end of the piece of elastic because it may have some fray parts on it. And I did that by just cutting off any strands that were coming out from the end of the elastic. You have to make sure here, obviously, you don't cut the elastic back because you want it to be the correct length. You can cut it back a little bit if you need to, and because obviously it's elastic, it's elasticated, but you only have a certain amount of giving there across the whole length of the, of the item. You don't want to um, cut back too much of this elastic and I didn't need to cut it back on mine I just tidied up the ends any frayed parts then what you do is you have to obviously take into account I've now refitted this back in but you have to then grip the clasp because remember these these claws on the clasp um, hopefully you can see that but these claws on the clasp are pushed into the elastic and that's what is what retains the elastic in the clasp so these claws, of course, are still closed, but the elastic isn't in there. So you have to open up those claws so you can fit the elastic back in again. So how you do that is, again, imagine that this elastic isn't, isn't actually attached to this clasp. Imagine this is a separate clasp. I'm obviously not going to I'm not going to undo all this and, and uh, take the clasp off the elastic because um, I don't want to undo all the good work that I've done. But what you'd have to do is hold the clasp with a pair of pliers um, and then judiciously lever out the claws of, of the clasp on each side so you've got all the claws out so that you can then fit the elastic into this clasp and what you do is you trial fit it so you first of all you open up all the claws of the clasp and then try and see if you can fit the elastic in there and when you can fit it in there and it fits in there and you know without any issue what you need to do then is get some epoxy glue I used epoxy glue you can use other sorts of glue I would say two pack epoxy glue is best or super glue, but I would say two pack epoxy glue is actually better, to be honest. And then put a little bit of epoxy glue well, after you've mixed it up. If you're using two pack, obviously you have to mix up a hardener with, with the adhesive. Then only, you only need a little bit. And then you put a little bit around the end of the elastic and a little bit at the base of the clasp. Um, but enough in there so that it oozes out a little bit. Then push the elastic into the clasp, back into the clasp. And then while it's before it dries, just judiciously, either with a normal pair of pliers or probably better, which is what I used, a pair of snipe nose pliers, just judiciously using the edge of the clasp as leverage, bend each claw back over into the elastic carefully, judiciously as you go round. And that will push the claws back into the claws of the clasp back into the elastic, which will help retain it. And you'll have the additional fixture of the glue, which will help retain the elastic in there. And that's how I repaired it. Um, now, you have to wait before you fit it back together again. And before you put any stress on this, obviously, you have to wait for the glue to go off. <laughs> if you're using a two pack glue or any type of glue, um, it only takes about 15 minutes with, with two pack adhesive um, as something like Araldite, which is what I used. Only takes about 10, 15 minutes for the glue to go off. But wait until the glue's properly gone off, then you can tidy it up a little bit if you want and obviously give it a good check around to make sure all the claws of the clasp are located back into the elastic. So when you're fitting it back together again, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you put this sleeve on first. Do not forget this, this is vital. But you need to make sure that this sleeve has the arrow pointing outwards towards the end, towards where the hook will be. You can see there the arrow is very faint. It's embossed on the plastic sleeve. So you put the plastic sleeve over the end of the elastic and the end clasp. Then you push 
the metal clasp into the hook and you'll see there it's just about to go past these plastic retainers and then it will be retained around the back of the clasp. So as I push it in, you may hear a click. There you go. And there was a click and that click is the clasp going past these retainers and now it won't pull out. And to make sure it doesn't pull out, what you do is you push this clasp back over. Again, you align the arrow here to the back of the hook and it will push over you hear the click there and that in effect pushes those plastic retainers back in against the top of the clasp against the back of the clasp rather and it prevents the clasp from coming back and as you can see that ain't going anywhere so the rear luggage storage net attaches at the bottom and the side here it attaches at the bottom through these hooks with this elasticated strap section which has a popper which folds back on itself and then pops to to um, act as a fastener and you can see there the hook on the other side now to be able to get this through here you could try and push it through this side but the way how these are supposed to attach is to push through from this side and then come up and then and then pop over so you can gain access to the popper so to be able to do that you need to put your screwdriver at the back here so you can pull up the end as you push it through otherwise you're not going to be able to ret retrieve the the um, strap as it comes through from the hook so this is very tricky to loop through but you have to get your screwdriver underneath and then pull it forward and then snap it closed get the bugger closed before it can go back under again and then with this side you just have this hook and the retainer here so you put the clasp in and you push the hook back like so and then it retains in so that's the left hand side and then you just do exactly the same for the other side it's a bit tricky there you go and that's the storage net back in again and obviously to remove it it's just a reversal of that procedure you push these hooks in you push this bit of plastic retainer in here so you can then push the hook out twist it round as you do actually it might be easier with a screwdriver This, the, the first one's harder to remove because it's under tension then obviously the other side will remove a lot easier and then you unpop this stud and then loop it through the hook I won't take that out now because it was a bit of a pain in the backside to get back in again and obviously to put it back as I've said this is under tension so it's tricky but there, once you know how to do it it actually pops in quite easily